All right, welcome back to another day of Dear Kevin. So as I've been saying for the last few episodes, um, I'm finally on to the beginning of phase two of Kevin Smith's film career. Uh, you know, the first post Jay and Silent Bob movie, the first PG-13 movie, the first, uh, you know, step towards something beyond the interlocking Buick Universe movies he'd made up to that point. And that movie, of course, is 2004's Jersey Girl. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, this movie got the shit kicked out of it by critics. Um, a lot of his hardcore fans were pissy about it. There were a lot of jokes made about it. Um, in the same way that people made fun of Mallrats. Like, to this day, if you ask him about Mallrats, he'll make some joke about how it died at the box office, which is true. A uh, similar kind of thing with Jersey Girl. There's plenty of jokes in his film circle, you know, his circle of friends. If you listen to podcasts or commentary tracks, he'll, whenever it comes up, he makes reference to the fact that it didn't go well. Um, a lot of critics, I think, um, even the critics who didn't like him already, I think, were offended that he would try to play in a, uh, in a more commercial, uh, less, um, you know, dick and fart joke type of movie. And I think the critics who did like him, had kind of embraced him, felt a bit betrayed. Um, either way, that's ludicrous. Um, the story behind the movie, if you uh, check out an evening with Kevin Smith or listen to the commentary tracks, um, the story behind the movie couldn't be a more, like, lovely, honest place for, like, a story for a movie to come from. Like, the reason why he made the movie couldn't be more, you know, personal and lovely. And, you know, there's nothing, there was nothing in here about, you know, the behind the scenes of it of him saying, I want to make a PG-13 movie so I can make a lot of money. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I'm going to sell out. That was so not his intention. Um, if you're, if you're going to believe what he says, which, why wouldn't he? He's Kevin Smith. Um, during Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and I'm not sure when he started writing it, he had an idea. Um, he'd had Harley, you know, his daughter. He'd married Jen. And uh, I believe that he was um, looking at his sleeping infant daughter and imagining, you know, his life, like, imagine what his life was like before, imagine what his life would like be like, you know, now that he has this kid, and just kind of marveling at, like, look what my wife did, look what a lovely life I have, I can't fucking believe the miracle that is my life right now with my wife and my, my child. And then he started thinking, like, man, if I didn't have Jen, I'd be, I'd be fucking nothing. Like, <laughs> you know, what would, I can't even imagine how I'd go forward now that I have this daughter in my world. Um, what would we do if I didn't have Jen in my life? And from that, you know, depressing thought and that kind of celebration of his wife grew this story, and that's the plot of Jersey Girl. For those of you, you know, that haven't seen Jersey Girl, Kevin Smith fans or not, if you've avoided it, <laughs> the plot is uh, Ben Affleck plays a music executive living in New York who um, meets a girl, falls in love, gets married, and has a kid, and she dies in childbirth. And from there, um, the Ben Affleck character has to leave New York, move in with his father, played by George Carlin, and kind of restart his life as a single father. Um, Cut to seven years later, and he's been raising this girl, this girl uh, by himself, seven-year-old daughter, and trying to figure out what his life is like now, and not being happy with what his life is like now, and wishing he can get back to that kind of New York lifestyle he had, and all that good stuff. That's the, the basic story of Jersey Girl. Um, right up front, I'm going to say, I don't dislike this movie at all. Um, I'm a huge fan of this movie. I'm one of its... I won't even say Jersey Girl apologists. It just, it just is unabashedly a good movie. It's not... It's not spectacular, you know, it's not knock you out of the park or anything like that. It just is a perfectly watchable, fun, sweet little movie with some actually amazing performances and moments in it. And I'm not the only one. Um, Roger Ebert, historically, uh, has been a fan of Kevin Smith, been supportive of him uh, since the beginning with Clerks. I'm sure he had something negative to say about Mallrats. Everybody had something negative to say about Mallrats, but he liked he liked uh, Jersey Girl quite a bit. There's a quote on the back of the DVD, thumbs up, a winner. If you go read uh, the, the Kevin Smith... Kevin Smith. If you go read the uh, Roger Ebert review at RogerEbert.com of Jersey Girl, you'll see that he, you know, I think he gave it three out of four stars and just said, you know, this is a sweet little movie. And yeah, there are some missteps and it does feel a bit strange, you know, knowing where Kevin Smith came from. But it is just, it's, you know, Kevin Smith is a guy with a big heart and he's got a lot of love. And this movie shows that without a filter of like, you know, vulgarity or comic books or anything else. It just is a big soppy kind of cliche story. And that's fine sometimes. It's a very sweet little movie. Um, <laughs> I don't know who said this at Fox TV, but the other quote on the back says, it's Kevin Smith's best movie ever, which, no, it's not. But it's still, it's a good one, for sure. Um, I like it a lot. In the evening with Kevin Smith 2, which I'll get to probably next time, I'm not really sure what the next video is going to be, but in that DVD, uh, in that uh, evening with special, somebody mentions that, um, that they consider Jersey Girl his Annie Hall. Um, whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know if that means it's his best film or his transition film or what, but um, 
So why do I like this movie as much as I do? Um, I got a lot of, uh, you know, history with it. It was, um, it came out when I, when it was, when I was in high school, 2004. Um, it was my first Kevin Smith film seen in theaters knowing who he was. I'm almost positive I saw Janet's Aunt Bob Strike Back in theaters. It might have been a blockbuster rental, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw that one in theaters. But I didn't know anything about Kevin Smith, I was just seeing a movie. This one, by the time Jersey Girl would come out, I had fallen down the rabbit hole of Kevin Smith very, very hard. Um, 2003, 2004 was my time, you know, where I fell in love with Kevin Smith. I watched all of his movies, I started writing screenplays of my own, you know, I listened to all the commentary tracks, I became obsessed with Kevin Smith. Um, so I was lucky enough to have that year uh, a new Kevin Smith film, and not only a new one, but something different. And even, you know, at age 15, um, and being a huge, you know, unabashed fan of Jan and Bob, I was really excited to see a movie that didn't include them. Not because I don't like them, but because I was like, I was excited to see, you know, my new hero, who I just kind of discovered, stretch himself and do something completely different. So um, I went in with, you know, very much like, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see this movie. Um, the other thing is, um, it's sort of my first date, I guess. It's not really a date. I did take a girl to it. We were both 15. So my dad had to drop us off and we got Starbucks beforehand and, uh, you know, all that good shit. We were just friends, but I like her. So, you know, in a weird way, it's sort of my first date in a very, you know, freshman year of high school kind of way. Um, she didn't like the movie very much. I mean, I guess she thought it was fine. But it, there is that scene. If you've seen the movie, there's a scene after um, Ben Affleck's wife, who, let's just say it, Ben Affleck's wife in this movie who dies early on is played by Jennifer Lopez. And people fucking hated Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. The whole, the whole, um, what do they call him? What the fuck was their nickname? Batflex, all I can think in my head now. Um, Benefer. People fucking hated the Benefer thing at that point. They made a movie called Geely, which everybody fucking hated. So when Jersey Girl came out, people were like, fuck that movie on principle for it being another Jennifer Garner, sorry, Jennifer uh, Lopez, Ben Affleck movie. So she plays the, the mother in the movie who dies early on. And uh, there's a scene with Ben Affleck talking to his infant daughter where he has to kind of give a monologue and he does break down and cry. And it is the one moment in the movie where I think Affleck made a misstep. I don't know if it's the angle that they're shooting it from, I don't know if there was a different take, but there's a moment where he starts to cry talking to his infant daughter, and the camera's kind of shooting up at him, so it's not very a very flattering angle. You know, it's like the baby's point of view. And there's a moment where he just kind of grits his teeth, like he can see every fucking tooth in his head, and he goes, <laughs> like it's a really, it's not a good moment. <laughs> and it's a very important scene, it's a well-written scene, it's a very sweet scene, but that moment is jarring, and uh, I remember the girl I was with at the time laughing very loudly, and I was so fucking mad. I was like, shut up! I'm trying to enjoy this. <laughs> um, so that's my personal connection to the movie. Sort of pseudo first date. My first Kevin Smith film in, in theaters. And um, <laughs> I still very much like it. The main reason now that I, I revisit it um, is, is George Carlin. So, as I said, Ben Affleck uh, plays a music executive in New York. His wife, Jennifer Lopez, dies and he has to move in with his father in New Jersey. Um, his father is George Carlin, and Kevin Smith wrote the part with George in mind. Um, George Carlin's performance in this fucking movie is spectacularly good. Every single scene is great. He gets to come in and make jokes. He gets to kind of be the, uh, the cynical, not cynical, but the, um, you know, the wise-ass older character. He has a bit of wisdom, but he's also, you know, gets to kind of play the fool at times. And he's got a moment near the end where... <laughs> He, made, he almost made me cry in theaters, and it's, it's really hard for me to watch now that he's gone. Um, particularly knowing that Kevin Smith, um, his father died during the production of this movie, or just after. Um, I believe he got to see it. Uh, Donald Smith, Kevin Smith's father, got to see Jersey Girl before he died. The film is dedicated to him. And um, while on the surface this movie is about a father and his daughter, the real heart of the movie for me, at least in the form that it exists now, is actually the father and the son relationship. And one of the subplots of the movie I guess the plot of the movie, it's not really plot heavy, it's very character driven, but I guess the plot of the movie is, you know, Ben Affleck gets a chance to move back to New York and, you know, leave Jersey behind and move out of his father's house and him and his daughter can move back to New York and he can get his old life back. That doesn't happen, he decides to stay in New York and be with his kid in a very, you know, ham-fisted, very sweet way by bailing on a job interview and running to see his kid's school play be involved in his kid's school play. That's the climax of the film. Again, very ham-fisted and cheesy, but swear to God, in the movie it's incredibly sweet and charming. And the school play itself is wonderful. Anyway, after all that's done, there's a scene at the bar where um, Affleck is talking to Carlin. And Carlin's, you know, being his usual smart-ass self, and he's like, uh, yeah, whatever, you don't want to move, what about moving to New York, you know? And uh, Affleck's like, ah, come on, you don't want us around, right? Wouldn't you want us out of your house? 
You know, you don't need your son and your grandkid cramping your style. You're a swinging bachelor. Don't you want to live alone? And Carlin kind of quietly says, about as much as I want to die alone. And there's a moment where Aflac, you know, the character, sees his father for the first time and understands just how how much his how much his dad loves him and how much how much being around his granddaughter means to him and you know we never meet George Carlin's wife in the movie she died before the movie started so this is a single man you know a widower living alone who out of tragedy gets to kind of have a wonderful life with his son and his granddaughter and see her grow up in his house and at that moment at the end where he finally where George Carlin has been the smart ass character the whole movie and a bit crude and drinking too much and all that stuff and given Aflac no end to shit, to see him admit, like, in a very small way, like, no, I want you in my life, I need you in my life, I love you in my life, um, it's just a beautiful moment, and it's really, it's, it really gets to me. Um, on the commentary track, there are two on the DVD. Um, one is uh, Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier, producer again, and Jason Mewes as a special guest who uh, is not in the movie, so he's there as the eye of the viewer. He was going to be in the movie, he was going to play um, the Jason Biggs part, who is, like, Ben Affleck's assistant. He was going to be in that, he was going to play that, that role, but instead he had like warrants out for his arrest in New Jersey and drugs and all this horrible shit, so they couldn't put him in it. So instead he's on the commentary track, I believe freshly sober at that point, and uh, that's one commentary track, a lot of fun, a lot of fun behind the scenes. And the other commentary track is just Kevin Smith and Ben Affleck, and that fucking commentary track is amazing. It's one of my favorites that, um, well, any commentary track really, one of my favorites, but it's also one of the best View Askew commentary tracks because it's two, two old friends who've been through... A bunch of movies together at that point um, almost a decade as friends and as, as partners in film and they both you know Affleck of course went on to be this huge movie star with Armageddon and, and um, uh, Good Will Hunting while Kevin got to kind of stay in the independent world and write and direct his own movies but hearing this conversation you know at the end at the end of all this nonsense and I believe him and I believe that Affleck had broken up with JLo by that point in the, when they recorded the commentary track hearing these two artists and friends talk about their experiences together and talk about this movie which was such a risk for kind of both of them because it's not the kind of thing when you think of Ben Affleck and the movies he does well the kind of movies that have been hits you generally don't think of him as you know a father figure or as playing kind of a bumbling every every man you know generally he's either blowing shit up on in, you know in space rocks or he's in Kevin Smith movies kind of playing a bit of an every man but a much more vulgar you know Kevin Smith analog or you think of him doing you know something with Matt Damon <laughs> This is a, a bit of a stretch for him as an actor, and I know he loved playing the part, and I think it's some of his best work, again, aside from that horrible fucking teeth moment. Um, but anyway, on that commentary track, they, they talk about um, the father-son relationship, the Ben Affleck, um, George Carlin relationship. And some critic, Kevin Smith mentioned some critic saying, like, I like the movie, it's fine, um, I like your other work better, but... To me, I think the mistake was that it's too much about the little girl, who was a great actress, but the real heart of the movie was the father and the son, and I think if the movie focused on that relationship, particularly with those actors playing it, the movie could have, you know, been something astounding. Speaking of the movie being, you know, possibly being something astounding, if, the what if of Jersey Girl. The movie is average movie length for this type of movie, which means like an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, 102 minutes. So an hour and 40 minutes. I generally hate movies in that length because to me that's the most mainstream bullshit running time. It's the most forgettable. Like every shitty Jennifer Aniston movie, every Katherine Heigl movie, like all those bad rom-coms, bad action movies, shitty dramas, all of those tend to be about 104 minutes, 105 minutes, which is an hour and 40 minutes long. I hate that running time because to me it screams of not knowing what the movie is. A movie that's two hours plus... That's a movie that clearly, you know, it's got, it's got a lot of depth to it, a lot of story to it, and that means you're, you know, going in, you know you're going to have to sit down and experience a longer film. It's going to take its time, it's going to breathe, and it's going to build to a resolution. If you go to a movie that's, you know, under 100 minutes, 99 or less, a lot of kids' films do this, um, you know, a lot of comedies do this. Every once in a while you run across a great action movie that's fucking, you know, 85 minutes long. Those movies know exactly what they are, and it's all about cutting every ounce of fat on the movie, and just like, let's just tell the story beat by beat by beat and go. A lot of revenge movies are about 85 minutes long. A lot of comedies are about 95 minutes long. Most Kevin Smith movies are, you know, 90 to 99 minutes long. So this Jersey Girl movie, the, the, the theatrical cut, is 104 minutes. And when you watch it, it does feel a little bit like... It, it's one of those movies that feels simultaneously too long and also too short. And I, you know, the reason why is usually there's a lot of stuff that's been cut out and um, or a lot of padding that's been inserted to make the movie feel more important than it is. 
Apparently, the original cut of this movie was about two hours, ten minutes, two hours, twenty minutes. And I believe um, the mantra during the editing, during the post-production was, if Jersey Girl, not Jersey Girl, Jerry Maguire can work at two and a half hours, then Jersey Girl can work at two and a half hours. <laughs> Kevin Smith loves Jerry Maguire. I love Jerry Maguire. If you are a fan of writing, Tom Cruise, romantic comedies, 90s movies, you love Jerry Maguire as well. Um, and that movie does run fairly long. You don't think about it when you think of that movie. You think of it being pretty quick, I guess. But it's got a lot of story to it. It's got a lot of character to it. There's a big journey those characters go on together. And I have no idea what the long version of Jersey Girl, the analogous version to Jerry Maguire, would be. Apparently a lot of it dealt with the pre-Jennifer Lopez death. You know, we got to see their courtship a bit more. Um, we got to get to know Ollie. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's a kind of a... It is very much a starring vehicle, Jerry Maguire kind of role for Ben Affleck. You know, he's... There's a great cast around him, but he's the star. He's the one going to anchor it. And as we stand now, um, J-Lo dies by the end credits in the movie. I think she's like seven minutes in and Jennifer Lopez is gone. Um, I really want to see the extended cut of Jersey Girl. And I'll get to that more in my Dear Kevin, but he said at one point, uh, multiple times actually, Kevin Smith said, like, I don't really have director's cuts. He edits the movie. You know, the movie you see in theaters, that's the director's cut. Um, there's a lot of deleted scenes sometimes, but it's choices he made. It's very, it's never the studio saying, you know, cut this out. Um, Dogma's got like an hour and a half, something crazy like that of deleted scenes, because there's a lot of content in that movie that kind of had to go. I'd like to see an extended cut of Dogma, and he refers to that as well, like, Mallrats, I believe, has an extended cut. That's an extended cut. It's not a director's cut. He does say he doesn't have director's cuts, with the exception of Jersey Girl. There is a longer version of that that kind of got fucked. And he made the choice. He stands by the movie. But, you know, it was pretty clear during testing. They had a lot of test screens. People fucking hated, you know, the first 30, 40 minutes of that movie. And it's because of the whole Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez thing that was going on at the time. Um, it's frustrating when you're making a movie. So I've heard, heard from a lot of directors, not just Kevin Smith. It's really frustrating when you're making a movie and you're testing it to be told by, you know, you spent all these millions of dollars, you know, making a movie, shooting a movie, editing a movie, and now you're showing it to people for the first time. And instead of trusting in the artist who made the movie, you're going to take the opinion of a bunch of strangers who are seeing something for the first time and they're very much in the moment. So, you know, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, fuck it, let's go with Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, if you made a Mel Gibson movie the day before, like you're test screening a Mel Gibson movie, the day before he got arrested and talked about how Jews are evil and all that sugar tits nonsense, the testing probably would have been through the roof. He was a huge action star, big movie star in his own right beyond just blowing shit up. Would have been fantastic. One week later, if you take that same movie and you test it, people are going to hate that fucking movie because all of a sudden it's in the press that, you know, Mel Gibson's a fucking insane racist asshole. <laughs> The testing of a movie does not reflect what the movie actually is. And a lot of times it can fuck up a good movie. There have been numerous cases where, you know, look at Blade Runner is probably the most prominent example where, you know, the movie we got in theaters is so not nearly as good as the movie we eventually got to see years later on DVD. In the case of Jersey Girl, I don't know. I do know that what they cut out was mostly Jennifer Lopez related, which of course hurts the Ben Affleck, the Ollie Trinky story. And that's frustrating. I very much want to see that. And like I said, I'll get into that more, a direct plea to Kevin at the end. Um, the DVD is absolutely worth getting. Like I said, there's two commentary tracks. Even if you don't like the Treacly movie itself, the PG-13 of it all, get the DVD because, again, it's physical media. Nobody gives a shit. So you can find it online for very, very cheap. Also, you know, it got lambasted by the critics. It wasn't a bomb. It made its money back. It was a profit movie. But people think of it as a big bomb, which means it's going to be very cheap in DVD stores. Get it if you're a fan of Kevin Smith, because as I said, the commentary tracks are fucking fantastic. Also, there's an extended kind of like conversation with Kevin Smith and Ben Affleck, um, where they're just sitting around bullshitting each other and talking about the history of their friendship and the movies they've made. A similar thing happened on the um, Inside Man DVD, the Denzel Washington Spike Lee movie, where they do the same thing. It's just Denzel and Spike sitting down talking about their friendship. And that, that feature with Kevin and, and Ben is fantastic to watch. And there's a moment in that where they kind of spoil, like, Ben Affleck almost drops the ball, or lets the, lets the cat out of the bag saying, you're going to do Clerks 2 next. Spoilers, he made Clerks 2 after this. And he decided to do Clerks 2 by the time the movie was in post-production, the DVD was coming out. And there's a moment where they're sitting around talking about this movie and Kevin Smith's career and Affleck saying, like, look, you return to the well all the time and you've been there before and I have a feeling, and Kevin goes, don't you fucking say it. And Affleck goes, I have a feeling you may want to go back to that territory again. But for now, you've made Jersey Girl, and I think that's great. Almost knocked my Mickey phone over. Shit. Anyway, Ben Affleck almost lets it out of the bag that Clerks 2 is happening in this DVD. Uh, there's also a bunch of um, articles to read, and I think a couple of, like, 
Uh, Tonight Show shorts. Yeah, uh, Kevin Smith is on the Tonight Show um, every every once in a while as a regular doing like these roadside attractions where he would travel around and you know the world's biggest ball of popcorn that kind of thing. For some reason, those are on this DVD as well. So check the DVD out; it's really fun. Uh, as far as the rest of the movie is concerned, like I said, uh, Ben Affleck's really good for the most part. Is <laughs> that one moment? Carlin's fantastic in it. Um, Liv Tyler plays his uh, romantic sort of romantic lead, best friend, friend character, sort of romantic lead. It's not a romance, but she's adorable in the movie. She very much plays a Kevin Smith type character, but puts her own spin on it. She's fantastic. If you've seen Armageddon, you know they have pretty good chemistry, Liv Tyler and Ben Affleck. Um, she's very sweet in the movie. The little girl, the Jersey girl of the title, uh, is played by Raquel Castro. She's fantastic and adorable, not at all obnoxious. You know, they don't overplay it. Um, Jason Biggs is in it. As, uh, you know, like I said, Ben Affleck's assistant, he's fine in his own his scenes, he gets a couple laughs, he gets some heartfelt moments. And uh, I won't spoil how, but Will Smith is in it as well, playing himself. Um, and he's fantastic. The scene, again, if you're going to go to YouTube and just watch one thing, check out the scene, you know, Jersey Girl, Ben Affleck, Will Smith. That scene is fucking fantastic. It's, Will Smith and Ben Affleck have great chemistry together, and Will Smith is so fucking effort, effortlessly charming and funny as he always is. And it's one of those scenes that you watch, you're like, fuck, I want, I want there to be a Kevin Smith... Will Smith movie. Like, I think that'd be fantastic together. I think they'd do really well if they made a whole movie together. Um, so the cast is great. If you're into musicals at all, there's a full-on tribute to Sweeney Todd, and they do the entire God That's Good. Well, not quite the entire. It's slightly cut, but they do the song God That's Good from Sweeney Todd. Um, Kevin Smith being a big musical fan and a big fan of Sweeney Todd, there's a full-on production of God That's Good done by, you know, Ben Affleck, George Carlin, Liv Tyler, the little girl, and they're doing it as front of a, as far as a, a school pageant. Everybody else is doing cats. They did Sweeney Todd, which, if you know anything about that play, which is about eating people, <laughs> it's very fucking funny to watch a, a an audience full of parents and PTA members react to uh, the story of the demon barber of Fleet Street. It has its high moments, like I said. Um, another big one is towards the end. There's a moment where Affleck kind of has to yell at the little girl. He's yelling at his daughter because she's saying, I don't want to move back to New York. I like it, New Jersey. You're stupid and I hate you. I wish mommy had died instead of you. Which is a really fucked up thing. But she's seven years old. She's allowed to say it. And Affleck, um, the, the father, the character, kind of snaps for a second. He's like, you know what? I fucking hate you right back, you little shit. You and your mother ruined my life and I just want it back. And that's, again, it's a really hard moment to have. And of course, the little girl is fucking devastated. And Affleck switches immediately like, holy shit, what did I say? It's a great performance. It's a good story. Um, the use of the song Landslide <laughs> always makes me happy. Um, so there's a lot of little details in it. If you haven't seen it, give it a watch. It's harmless. Anybody out there who thinks like, I don't want to watch that Jersey Girl movie. I heard it's dog shit. It absolutely is not. There's plenty of good jokes. There's a, lot, there's a long masturbation conversation. So it's got that whole Kevin Smith sexy talk in it. It's a really fun movie. It's sweet. It's absolutely worth your time. Plus, maybe if we keep watching it and talking about it, maybe someday he'll release the uh, director's cut, which leads me nicely into the Dear Kevin. Dear Kevin Smith, I am a huge fucking fan of your movies, and I especially really like uh, Jersey Girl, despite what everyone says about it. I like it a lot. I think it's brave of you to have done this kind of movie. It's your only PG-13 movie to date, and I think you did fantastic in that world. You worked with uh, an Oscar-winning cinematographer, Vilmos Sigmund, and the film looks great. I think the films you made later with Dave are better, and um, better looking, better movies, but the point is you don't just have to do, you know, Kevin Smith movies. Um, and I know you know that, which is why you're off doing this crazy batshit stuff you're doing now in, uh, in Canada <laughs> with Tusk and the Walrus movies and the fucking Moose Jaws and all that stuff. However, if you have any kind of ability to do this, I don't know if the Weinstein's on the rights, I don't know if you and Harvey are on speaking terms, I don't know how this can be done, but if it's at all possible, please, please uh, release the extended cut of Jersey Girl. Um, do a Louis C.K. style. Just put it up on, you know, put it up on a website and let, let us download it. We'll pay to download it. I guarantee you will pay to download it. Um, or if you can, release it on DVD. Put it on Netflix. Do something. Put it out there somehow. I know that you, I think you've screened it once or twice at, like, the Vulgarathon, where you do your big, epic Kevin Smith uh, movie marathon thing. Well, I couldn't go to those. I didn't live in Los Angeles at the time. So, either hold another Vulgarathon and do it in Austin so I can come, or better yet, please, please release the extended cut of Jersey Girl. I've heard you talk about it in a few places, and I just, I desperately want to see what you intended. I want to, or release the script, you know. Um, it's one of the few movies you've made that doesn't have an accompanying script book. Um, I want to know. I really like this script. I really like the fact that you did it. I'm a huge fan of the movie, and I want to know more about it. I want to see what you originally intended. Plus, I've heard you say that uh, Affleck's stuff that got cut was really good. In particular, is that, that shot where Affleck is in, in the hallway crying, and you had to do the triple dissolve. 
because he broke down so violently that the audience couldn't handle it. I want to see that full take. I want to see that performance, you know? Um, I want to see what you really intended to do with Jersey Girl. So, if you can at all, please release that, uh, like I said, release it for download, release it on DVD, put it on Netflix, put it on YouTube. Like, dear God, please, please, please uh, release the extended cut of Jersey Girl, the director's cut, your full cut of Jersey Girl, because I think I'm not the only one who very much would like to see it. Um, please do that. <laughs> Sincerely, George. So, that's it for today. Um, like I said, go see the movie. Fucking, I will never stand here again. This phone is just fucking up my whole, I can't gesture as much as I want to. <laughs> That's it for today. I'll be back uh, tomorrow to talk about the next Kevin Smith thing, which will either be a comic book or it'll be an evening with Kevin Smith too. Um, I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to do yet. Um, sorry, I totally spaced out for a second. I was like, Mark Wahlberg and Boogie Nights just went away. <laughs> Thank you for watching as always. Like and subscribe. Uh, check out the blog at adolescentconceptions.wordpress.com and go watch Jersey Girl if you haven't. Um, particularly all you Kevin Smith fanboys out there who ignored it because you thought it was shitty. It's not. It's a really cute movie. Especially, you know, we've probably grown up a bunch since that movie came out. I guarantee you the older you get, the more you're going to like Jersey Girl. It's not a uh, it's not a silly little chick flick. It's not a pussy little movie. It's, it's a really good movie in a lot of ways. So go check it out. Thank you for watching as always. Check out my other videos. And I'll be back tomorrow to talk about some other Kevin Smith stuff. So, thank you.